Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo Tutorial where I'm trying to find a, a use for using the metallic filter which can be found in the procedural textures which is in the live um, filters um, I will come to them a bit later on but I sort of f discovered this sort of by accident I watched a Photoshop tutorial by Blue Lightning TV recently and he was using a filter which we don't have available to us in Affinity Photo um, to sort of make this very textured portrait image and in my efforts to try and find a sort of way to copy that I sort of stumbled upon this um, and there you can get different effects depending on the blend mode you use and the settings that you use um, so I've done that one, I've done this one with different effects and this one again you know all with different effects now he used a portrait and uh, I've been using portrait images you could possibly use this on other images but I think it would work best on a portrait and quite what you would use these various portraits for are, are really not 100% certain maybe you could use it for maybe your avatar image on a sort of chat site or on Facebook or just for a bit of fun to you know to find out how to use affinity photo and just to find a use for this filter so I'm going to try a new image which I've not tried before because you get different results with different images and the settings that you use so there's no sort of hard and fast rule about the settings that you can use so first of all you need to open up an image now I'm going to just start a new document and it doesn't really matter what size I'm going to leave. it's on A6 at the moment I'll just make it say create and I'll come to the stock tab which is in this section here and I'm going to select an image from Pixabay um, I just put in portrait as my search but you could put in you know, if you want a picture of a lady or a man you could put in lady or man or just face or something like that and just try and find one um, let's try this one but you could just open up an image that you already have you don't necessarily have to do it like this now I'm not going to resize the image to fit the canvas I'm going to resize the canvas to fit the image and to do that I'm just going to come up to document and then clip to canvas and then that will make the canvas the size that the image was now obviously I don't need necessarily all this down here I just really want the head part of this so I'm going to crop this I mean I mean make the hands look a bit odd in the final image but I'll give it a go right we just double click that to make that the image size that we want we come back to layers so we can see the layers and uh, this is when we got to select the just the portrait part of the head part of the image um, let me just make sure um, finish this off and keep it this size and I'm going to just document and flatten so that finally cuts off all the bits that I don't want and I'm going to use the selection brush tool to select this lady's head and hands and what have you um, now I'm just going to click and drag and select as much as I can now this the selection doesn't have to be pixel perfect because you know, in the end it's just going to be sort of a sort of almost a diagram type image so let me just reduce the size of this selection brush and I'm using the square bracket left square bracket key to reduce the size just get that last few bits around the ears 
and I think I pretty much got the majority of this. Now there's a bit here that I don't want, so I'm going to come up to up here and select subtract, and then I'm just going to subtract that bit and reduce the brush size a little bit more. Alright, come back to add. Just grab that little bit there. Right. Now I pretty much got the majority of this lady's head and hands. And I am going to use refine just to get the bits, some of the bits that are missing. But I'm not going to go too mad with the refine option. And there was a button up the top here where you can click to refine. And I'm just going to raise the size of the brush, but again, using the square bracket keys and just sort of go around the edges of a head and hair, doing in fairly small steps. Just to give the computer time to catch up. And I'm not like I said, I'm not trying to get every strand and what have you, because they won't all necessarily show up in the final image. And just see if we can get a few of those. Right, I think that will do. I'll just go over that once more, like that. Now, what I want to do is change the output from selection to new layer and then click apply and what that will do it will turn off the original image and put that layer on a new layer all by itself now in this case it has um, left me with a white background which is what I wanted on your cutout it may if you've started with your own sort of image that hasn't got a sort of canvas that's white at the background anyway this will be empty in which case you would what you would need to do is add a new layer below it and flood fill that with white like in, but in, in my particular case I don't need it because I've already got the white background but I'm just showing you that if it has deleted the background then you can add the white background if you need it but I'll turn that off because I don't need it right so next we want to do is to change this into a black and white image so I've got this new layer selected and come to adjustments which is this half black and white circle down here and come up to black and white now you can adjust this however you want um, I've yes yeah, so down to personal taste but you want to give the later sort of filter that we're going to add a chance to find light and dark edges so if you get your black and white image is let's see these these colours down here have that little or no effect. It's only really the yellow and red. So the yellow will obviously make it, the lighter areas lighter and the red is making the darker areas darker. For this particular image, each image will be different. So you want to give it some nice nice bit of contrast for the filter to find something to work with so I'm fairly happy with that as it is let me just come off that flood fill tool and next we're going to, go to look at the metallic filter and this sort of two um, triangles on top of each other icon here is the live filters so if you click on that and you've got the this whole options down here and one of them is procedural textures or texture I should say you click on that 
it will open up the live procedural textures and but you will also note that it has made the procedural texture a child layer of the black and white adjustment which is what we don't want so just click on the icon for this layer and drag it to the top of the layer stack so it is now affecting the whole image not that adjustment so now we need to select the metallic filter so you come to presets click on the downward arrow and metallic is one of the options there and as you can see it has already had an effect on that image now this is where each image will have a different result and it depends on how you want it to sort of have a look so you can you've got three adjustments down here you've got amount bands and offset now how far you want to push or reduce the effect is up to your personal taste and the image that you're using um, I want it, I'm trying to get a sort of a metallic looking effect on this particular one so let me try this yeah we'll try that and see how that looks so I've made some slight adjustments to the three settings and now we'll just close that and what I'll next do is I'm going to right click this top layer and I'm going to click on merge visible and this will make a new layer that has got all the changes that we've made so far and so you could just save this and use this if you like the, the result but what I'm going to do next is I'm going to turn off the visibility of this procedural texture which at the moment is having no effect anyway because this layer at the top is hiding everything below but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer and again this is down to personal taste and what you think works because it, you can go through all of these different blend modes and get a different look um, now I personally in the ones I've done before I think the if I remember correctly I think this woman image I did here I used the add blend mode and I think in the others I used the luminosity blend mode so let's keep going down I can't remember where I was, I was on there we go so oh, I'm still on the wrong There we go, I was on the wrong image there. Um, yeah, so I was down to add, so light and colour. So like I said, it's up to you how you want this to look and how you want the effect. See, hard mix could be quite good. And if you come down to luminosity, there's but you can also reduce the effect that that is having and just have it slightly affecting it or completely affecting it it's again it's all up to your personal taste that's quite different negation yeah so that's a completely different look altogether so again if you like the look of what you've got you can leave it at that but you can also sort of inject a bit of color by using the gradient map now you can put this at the top of the stack or you can put it lower down you can get different effects using both but what I will do is I will click and highlight this black and white adjustment and I'm going to click on the adjustment icon and select um, I've lost it. So gradient map, there we go. And I'm going to 
just click and drag downwards this middle dot so I'm only working with two colors and so I mean even with the default red and blue I mean that is quite a striking effect so you could you know you can choose it whatever colors you want so I personally I think it works best with the because the left hand side of the gradient is the blacks and or shadows and the right hand side is the whites or light areas so I'm going to make the I'm going to highlight the blue which is the light areas and click on the color panel there and I personally think this works best using a fairly light color let's go for a yellow there and then obviously the darks and shadows it can be a darker color let's try something like that and close that so that is the gradient map at the bottom of the pile but what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and duplicate that layer click and drag it to the top of the stack and turn off the visibility visibility of the gradient map that is lower down and hopefully we can see that whereas the lower down one when that is turned on it's sort of a much subtler effect if I turn that off and then turn the top gradient map on is a completely different look so where you put the gradient map be at the top or underneath this top pixel layer will have an effect on the end results you get and as I think I've said it at least twice now that the effect you get will vary from picture to picture and how you make the adjustments you know with the procedural texture metallic filter and how you make the adjustments with the gradient map if you add it or even how you make the adjustments with the black and white uh, filter earlier on so you're never going to get the same sort of end result it's a case of personal taste and the adjustments that you use so it's just a bit of fun and it helps you learn a bit more about what you can and possibly can't do in Affinity Photo then get sort of some fun images and portraits for, for whatever projects you want to use it on so hopefully that has been of, of some help and of some use to somebody so thank you for watching and goodbye